Welcome, everyone. We are here on Friday the 13th for the website chat. So Jenny, take it away. Thanks, Cole. And I was going to say an inauspicious date for our, our website chat. So my sister was complaining earlier. They typically have just four days, school days, 40 school weeks at the Melville School. And she was having to go to school on Friday the 13th. So she was complaining just a bit about that. But thanks for taking the time to join us for this website chat. And for those of you who will watch the archived version, um, I hope you get a lot of a lot out of this um, this day's chat. So let's go ahead and get started. Ooh, little reminders always to help make this a successful Zoom meeting. And then an overview of some of the things that we want to talk about today. Um, some reminders about the state funding that's going to be coming your way very soon. I want to introduce some of you to a concept that we've been talking about here at the State Library for a while, uh, a single cost share formula for our various cost share models. I want to share an update from the commission meeting that occurred this week. And in particular, an update on the administrative rules process that's been kicked off with result of commission action at this meeting, and then some information about some upcoming events. So a reminder that October is when we strive to issue checks for state funding to public libraries that meet the public library standards. Those checks will include your per capita per square mile state aid as well as your federation funding. We've now completed the review process for your submissions of the public library standards and completed the deferral processes for any library that need deferrals. Um, just a reminder about your state payments this year, House Bill 91 did reauthorize the per capita per square mile state aid and it also increased the amount of revenue from 40 cents per capita to 50 cents per capita. We then have, of course, applied that new revenue amount to the formula that, that shares that funding, allocates that funding across those public libraries. So don't be surprised if you see a little bit of an increase in the amount of state aid that you receive. If you want more information about what you should expect, please do let staff know we have that information available for you. And then I think it's important always to have a reminder that um, just because you're seeing an increase in state funding doesn't mean that your local funders can reduce the amount of funding that you receive. Uh, that is actually a point that's in Montana code that uh, your local funds cannot be reduced and the, and the state funds cannot supplant your general operating funds. So uh, if you hear anything, like that from any local officials, please be aware of this statute. And again, if you have questions about the statute, please do let us know. Next, as I said, I wanna talk a little bit about this concept of a single cost share formula. I, I, I jokingly refer to it as the, the cost share formula to rule them all. I am a little bit of a Lord of the Rings fan. Um, if you are a participant in any of our statewide programs, and I think just about all of you are, you'll know that we have a cost share formula for the Montana Share Catalog. We have a different cost share formula for Montana Library to Go. We have yet another cost share formula for OCLC. And when we think about how we share costs, um, they do vary based on these different formulas it can be very confusing for the state library staff to administer. And I can only imagine how confusing it might be for local libraries to keep these all straight. So we've been talking for a number of years about trying to find a way to create a formula that can be used consistently across all of our statewide programs that would help libraries have a more clear and consistent understanding of what their cost shares for these programs are for new libraries that might be considering joining one of our statewide programs we would have a, a more clear way of determining what their cost share might be in the future and and hopefully by having a single model that's uh, more understandable 
we can provide you with more timely and more consistent information for your future budgeting purposes. What we have been exploring is a model that is based on the um, population served, much like we do with your per capita per, per square mile state aid. We of course then need to take into account school libraries and academic libraries and special libraries and identifying what their population served is as well so that we can again have a consistent way to measure um, how those the, the costs should be shared. Um, so we have been working very closely with our accountant here at the State Library, Ashley Kandich, and she has put together some scenarios for us to think about that would take the total costs of those services and allocate them based on uh, this population served model. Um, what we are seeing is that many libraries costs would be fairly similar to what you're already incurring. But in some cases, there could be some significant swings, either significantly reducing costs for some libraries or significantly increasing costs for other libraries. We are still exploring how we might be able to create different kinds of thresholds, either minimum costs that libraries might pay or maximum costs that libraries might pay in order to smooth some of those swings and in order to also reflect some of the budget realities and revenue realities that we know exist in libraries. And then we want to think about uh, how we might be able to phase in the adoption of a single cost share formula over a period of several years so that libraries aren't negatively impacted by significant increases in costs. Um, those are the kinds of concerns that we are keeping in mind as we explore whether or not we want to adopt this kind of single cost share formula model. We are going to be discussing this option with the Network Advisory Council at their meeting on November 8th. And so I really want to invite libraries to that meeting to share input and feedback with us in the Network Advisory Council about um, the, the kinds of changes that could be proposed under the single cost share formula and um, the, the approach that we're taking, as well as whether or not um, some of the changes would be worth uh, actually adopting a single cost share formula. So I want to be really clear that no decisions have been made at this time, but we do think that there's benefit from thinking about cost share models that are more consistent, more easily understandable, give libraries more predictability and encourage use and adoption of those statewide projects. Stop and invite any questions or any any comments. Quick little stretch break. We haven't been on for very long, but it's always good to give ourselves a chance to refocus. And then I will get into the administrative rules in just a moment, but a couple of quick updates I wanted to share from Wednesday's commission meeting. First, a huge thank you to the Stillwater County Library for hosting the October commission meeting. It was so nice of them to help us find a facility at the brand new Stillwater County Civic Center. What a, what a beautiful facility there in Columbus. Uh, their board of trustees hosted a reception for us the evening before the meeting, and that was just so kind and welcoming of them. We had a great chance to tour their library and visit with their staff and some of their trustees, and I just I really appreciate that so much. And I also wanted to give a quick shout out to uh, Jackie in Big Timber at the Carnegie, Carnegie Library and Mitch Grady 
at the Livingston Park County Library, they too hosted some of the commissioners and gave tours to them on our drive to Columbus on Tuesday afternoon. So thank you to all for making State Library staff and commissioners so welcome. We really appreciate it. Um, the October meeting is always when Federation coordinators share updates and their annual reports with the commission. So we had all of the Federation coordinators except for Sarah in person in Columbus. Sarah was able to join us online. It was a, a just a great opportunity for the commission to be able to visit personally with the Federation coordinators. The Federation coordinators did a fantastic job of conveying how federations and libraries use your funds that you receive uh, and the impact that they make on the work of your libraries. In particular, they emphasized uh, how important those federation funds are for your ability to afford some of our statewide programs, as well as the importance of training and networking that's made available through the federations. And I, I think that was one of the real bright spots in the commission meeting. Um, the commissioners really seem to understand and appreciate and, and value the work of the federations and um, the importance of the funding that's received through the federations. I know that there had been um, an early discussion a couple of months ago about adding some funds this fiscal year to the federation budgets. And originally, the uh, commissioners had not approved that decision, but they've asked to revisit that question at their December meeting. So wanted to put in a plug for the December 6th meeting where the commission will be reconsidering their decision around allocating more funds to the Federation specifically for training opportunities. And then the other point of interest that I wanted to bring to your attention from the commission meeting was a discussion that they had around continuing education and certification. I think you are all aware that Colet led a task force uh, over the last year looking at updating our certification and continuing education program. And the recommendations of that task force were adopted at the commission's June meeting. Um, since then, the commission had raised some questions about the kinds of continuing education content that we award credit for. And so the commission did have a conversation about what that looks like and what the commission's role is. And so you are all aware, um, if you haven't read the continuing education manual, the manual defines what qualifies as continuing education as uh, learning that occurs in a structured learning environment. Um, and the commission had a conversation about how we measure learning outcomes, for example, um, in, in that kind of structured learning environment. Uh, and then of course, as you know, continuing education has to be uh, earned in uh, the four categories necessary for uh, a library director to achieve the um, certification. So the commission didn't come to any outcomes from this discussion. Uh, we talked about the importance of making sure that local library boards understand what their directors are um, learning and then library directors have the authority to approve CE for their staff. Um, again, the commission didn't come to any d um, decisions or determinations, but it, it was a point of discussion that I wanted to make sure that you are all aware of and, and potentially something to pay attention to. Coley or Tracy, I don't know if there's anything that you would add to either of those points of discussion. I, I think that captured that nicely and I, provided links in our chat to all of the pertinent uh, resources and information pages. Does anybody have any questions for me or Colet about the certification program?
Let's move on then and talk about some of the administrative rules work that we have been undertaking over the last several months and the next steps that will occur. Um, we've talked about this at several of our website chats. So I, I know this isn't new information, but I wanted to update you on where we are in the process. Over August and September, Tracy led a task force of librarians. There was a, a um, board of trustee member, as well as a couple of commissioners on that task force. They considered public library standards that either had been impacted because of the legislative session or in our evaluation of the updated 2021 standards, we felt like they needed to be revisited. And then they also looked at the administrative rules that pertain to uh, state aid because uh, with the addition of tribal college libraries, we needed to make sure our administrative rules properly align with that legislation. Um, though that task force over the course of a couple of meetings made recommendations to the State Library Commission about updates to the administrative rules. Um, in particular, they were asked to consider whether or not we should continue to maintain a standard that requires the directors of libraries that serve more than 25,000 people to hold a master's of library science or equivalent degree. The task force recommended to the commission that the commission uh, maintain the current standard. Uh, the task force looked at the public library standard that requires year over year growth in uh, libraries budgets. And we decided that really the spirit of that standard was that libraries and library boards really understand the resources necessary for them to offer the services that they're offering as well as to continue to advance their library development services and that library directors and boards are able to and, and take the initiative to clearly communicate to local government officials the financial resources that are necessary to offer those kinds of services, um, recognizing that practically seeing year over year, year growth in budgets might not be achievable. So the task force recommended changing the language of that administrative rule to more closely align with the intent of, of that standard. We had asked whether or not the task force wanted to create a, a, or update the administrative rule that defines a hardship and the process through which libraries might request a deferral of the public library standards. Um, the task force said that they felt like the current process works well and did not recommend to the commission that we make any changes to that administrative rule. And then, as I said, the task force um, suggested language to align the state aid administrative rules with the legislation that in now includes the tribal college libraries. And the task force concluded their work at their meeting on September 22nd. And then at their meeting on Wednesday, the commission considered the recommendations from the task force. The commission concurred with most of the recommendations of the task force and uh, proposed the draft rules from the task force to move forward through the Montana uh, Administrative Procedures Act and, and the um, administrative rules process that that outlines. The commission also proposed a change to the administrative rule that requires the Masters of Library Science degree, recommending that that rule be changed to eliminate that particular requirement. Uh, that rule is found in the public library standards that pertains to personnel. And so it would simply eliminate that portion of that administrative rule. All of these proposed draft rules will now be shared with the Secretary of State's office where they are formally registered. Uh, we have to do that step by October 24th. And then once they are published by the Secretary of State's office, we will open up a formal public comment period that's required by the Montana Administrative Procedures Act. That comment period will begin on November 3rd. So 
look for public announcements from the State Library announcing the process and the public comment period. We will also have a form on the State Library's website where anyone can submit comments about any of the administrative rules that the State Library Commission is considering. We know in particular that the standard involving the degree requirement is likely to generate significant comment. And so according to the Montana Administrative Procedures Act, we are also planning to hold a public hearing to hear public comment. The date for that hearing has been scheduled for November 28th at 1 p.m. So again, look for uh, more information coming from the State Library about what that public comment period is and the process for sharing any public comment you might have about those administrative rules. And then at their December 6th commission meeting, the commission will weigh the public comment that they've received and then will take action to ultimately adopt final administrative rules. Any questions, comments, or discussion about the administrative rule changes that the commission is considering? All right, wrapping up with some other updates. As I mentioned, the Network Advisory Council is going to be meeting on November 8th. In addition to talking about the cost share formula, they're also going to be considering our FY24 library development plan. Uh, our staff and the Network Advisory Council have been working on better defining our goals and objectives for library development for the coming year. So that'll be a really interesting discussion that will occur at the Network Advisory Council meeting on November 8th. I mentioned the Public Library Standards Administrative Hearing on November 28th um, at 1 p.m. That meeting will be via Zoom. And then again, the State Library Commission meeting on December 6th. That meeting will be here in Helena and, and also available via Zoom. And as always, please um, take a look at that events calendar on our website where, uh, where we often post um, a variety of meetings and training opportunities. And then of course, we always um, look forward to your engagement with us through a variety of different kinds of communication means. So we hope you'll look for opportunities to continue to engage with all of us here at the State Library. With that, I'm happy to answer any questions or entertain any discussion about anything I talked about or anything else that you think is of interest or importance. This is going easy on me today. Um, Sarah, I think the hearing is just going to be via Zoom. Thank you. That's what I thought, but I wanted to make sure. <laughs> you bet. What other questions do you have? I was curious as to why they, the commission decided to um, retract the degree requirement. Did they give a reason? The commission feels that that's a decision that's best left to a local board 
to hire a candidate that meets the, the needs and qualifications that the local library board sets forth. Jenny, I guess I have one more question about the meeting on Wednesday. Um, are there any next steps with the um, hiring of a public information officer or because that was um, voted against that that's just the end of that conversation or or is there another avenue where you can? Um, at, at this point, that's likely the end of that conversation. Okay. What else? All right. Well, why don't we go ahead and stop the recording? Please do take our evaluation survey. We always wanna know how we can continue to improve the website chats and our learning opportunities that we make available for you. And I'll hang out for a little bit longer if there's anything else you wanna visit about.